Tonight in this tent, there are going to be miracles. And those miracles, everybody, uh, prepare your gift, but listen very carefully what I'm saying. Those miracles are going to come by the power of Christ and not a man. I cannot heal you. But at a given moment in this service, I'm going to be aware of people's needs. And I may even leave the stage. I may even go out there outside the tent. And I'm, I reserve the right to do everything that God tells me to do from this pulpit. And I want you to look at me, and I want you to know how to get ready for your miracle. It is the job of an anointed vessel, any man or woman that is anointed of God in a miracle service bears a awesome, fearful responsibility. I'm going to be used of God to remove the barriers between you and your miracle. I'm going to be used of God to encourage you and direct you to submit to the Holy Spirit. And during the miracle portion of our night, which is by His design and not mine, you're going to feel yourself being made ready. You're actually going to feel a transformation in your spirit right before God heals you. That transformation is the gift of faith. Everybody say out loud, gift of faith. Gift of faith. It is literally, it comes from Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to take everything I've got, give it to the Holy Spirit, and then he will pass it on to you. Miracle faith is not human belief. That deserves a very loud amen. amen. Miracle faith is not human belief. This is how you know you're about to be healed. You won't understand why you're so convicted that something is about to happen to you. I once was talking to an eminent surgeon about divine healing. And much to my surprise and pleasure, he believed in miracles. He was one of the most noted medical professions, professionals in our country. And he told me, I cannot explain what happens when Jesus heals a body. Because it's real. He said, I know it's real. Now listen. I told him... You use anesthetic, don't you? He said, yes. In order to help the patient go through something that's impossible to go through without anesthetic. I said, I want you to understand that faith does the same thing in a person. It literally, the brain, parts of the brain in surgery are turned off so that they can cut into you and operate on you. In the spirit... The gift of faith. How many of you are listening to what I'm saying right here? The gift of faith will come on you and do the same thing. It will cut off the parts of the brain that tell you a crippled person cannot walk. It cuts off the parts of the brain that say a blind eye cannot see. And all of a sudden, it's overruled. I want to ask everyone a question. I want everyone to listen to me before I pray. What is a major distinguishing factor between Christianity and every other religion? Don't answer it. This is called a rhetorical question. It means the speaker does it to awaken a curiosity. But I don't want you to say anything because you might be wrong. How many of you in this room would like to know what is a major distinguishing force between Christianity and every other religion in the world? 
I'm about to open that for you right now. And I'm going to do it even as this offering is being received. Christ versus Buddha versus Islam versus any Confucianism, Scientology, the Church of Oprah. You know she has a church. How many of you are ready to have that question answered once and for all? The only way I can answer it is by telling you a story. And I'm going to begin, and I've got to get this out. I've got to get it done. Several influential spiritual leaders were asked to do a forum. I told you earlier this week about a forum I was invited to called the Holy Man Jam where I was sandwiched between Scientology, Transcendental Meditation, and I had five minutes to talk about Jesus. And I can do it. But I want you to look me in the eye and listen to this part. I was asked again. This time I was ready. And at that time, in the San Francisco Bay Area, there was a serial killer who was one of the most terrifying figures in the history of California. He was called the Hillside Strangler. And the Hillside Strangler had changed the way every woman, nine counties, eight million people, this one murderer changed how all of them lived. No woman went out alone at night. I couldn't figure out why the Hillside Strangler became a force in my thinking when I went to do this forum with all these religions. I said every woman in this neighborhood that we're in doing this forum is a, a five-star resort that they had invited me to. I said every woman that lives in this neighborhood does not go out at night. And law enforcement can't find him, has no power over him. And so anyone that says this is a safe neighborhood is lying. Unless they have power over the hillside strangler. If they can arrest him, you can say it's a safe neighborhood. If you can find him, you can say it's a safe neighborhood. Then I said, on this stage tonight is every religion of the world. And then there's Jesus. And the difference between Christ and all of these men and all of these theologies is the most important thing I've ever said in my life to any crowd anywhere. The reason that Christ is different than Buddha. The reason that Christ is different than Muhammad. The reason that Christ is different than these spiritual beings is he defeated Satan on the cross. So I looked, I, I did something theatrical. So act like I'm speaking this way to the audience and I turn around, put my back to the audience and I look to all these gurus. I said, I don't care how low you can slow the heart, how fast that you can become as an athlete through your meditation or through your new age or through your occult. You see, the one thing that God said to me tonight, he said, get in that pulpit and destroy the witchcraft in Colorado Springs. So I want you to listen to me. Remember what I was doing a minute ago. I was facing the audience. Then I turned around and faced all the gurus. Like I'm doing here. We have 
people that I respect. Though we are from different faiths, I respect you. I respect your sincerity. And I'm appealing to that. Whether you are, you believe that yoga is more than just exercises. If you believe in the ancient spirits that we need to honor that are in the mountains. If you believe in the new age idea of the quantum leap of the, the human race. I know all your terms. I know all your stuff. I've studied this Tibetan Book of the Dead. I've been there. I spent 10 years at the University of California at Berkeley. <laughs> Listen, I know those $50 words, but I ain't going to use them because I'm going to pose the question. I'm looking at them all, and I said, what are you going to do about the devil? Until you've arrested the hillside strangler, the neighborhood is not safe. And until that day that the power of Satan over your life is broken, you are not free. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how famous you are. Until that day, your soul is never free until Christ steps in and tells the devil, get off of them. Go away. They're mine now. They're not yours anymore.